All right, folks, real quickly, I want to take you through some of the progress we've made. We finally sealed up and welded on our reverse bowl here, which will become the ash uh, reduction bowl setup. We've put an extra piece of steel, quarter inch all the way around uh, our reactor zone here, our, our reduction zone. And that's going to allow, because this gets so hot right here, that if, you know, there was a possibility that that steel that I had in there could have uh, melted down if there was ever an issue with this. This will give us a little more reinforcement for this zone. I can increase the temperature slightly in there and get a better reaction taking place. Uh, so you can see now, if I back up here, you can see that this is all ready to go. Uh, the next step here is to go ahead and attach our screen up here. Let me go ahead and fold this over so you can see what's inside of there. You notice I got one little offset hole from the uh, propane tank lid right here where my fingertip is. Uh, I'm going to have to cover that with a piece of steel. I don't think I want to leave an air gap like that. That'll be an off pressure area right there. Uh, you'll notice in here that this actually reduces again. You'll see how far underneath my fingers are sticking. Uh, that's another reduction point. This hole right here is actually smaller than the inside diameter of our other reduction point. So it's even a finalized reduction point before it goes into the ash container. This should guarantee a pretty good burn, a clean gas out of the end of it. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and start marking my hole zones across about right here somewhere. I'm going to take some measurements, try to make sure I put it about the right distance from right here. And we're going to go ahead and throw our air inlets right here, uh, all the way around. And I'll show you that when I got that hooked up and how we did it. Alright, a quick update of where we are in this thermal reactor unit. Real quickly, you can see the great screen that I'm going to cut down and make it so that it'll fit right up on top of our reduction bowl. Uh, that'll be the final stage of the burn, and the material will have to fall through the screen into our ash catch down below. Uh, real quickly here, you can see these holes that I've drilled in there. I put four holes so far, and you can see these pieces of pipe already on two sides that I've cut and measured. They're threaded in at the moment. Uh, in fact, what I'll probably end up doing here is unthreading them now that I got my measurements the way I wanted it and welding it the other way around so I can always get to these, unthread the pieces. Uh, it makes it more manageable if you ever have to take it apart or clean it. So that'll actually be sticking out of there. And for now, what we have is four half inch holes, or well, three quarter inch holes with half inch piping in them. Uh, I'm probably going to go through and put one more in between each one of them and then I'm going to stick those out like I showed you, threads out, and put caps on those. Uh, I'm going to try to run it with a four, it should be the right volume for this size of a vehicle and later on if I ever put this to a larger engine, a uh, generator or a bigger truck, uh, something like that, I can always open up these and attach right to it and I don't have to get in there and drill at that angle again. For now though, I believe if my mass airflow ratio is right, uh, this should create a perfect jet speed. It's just enough restriction on the flow to create a high pressure flow inside, which will give us the temperature we're needing. And if we need any others, we'll already have it ready to go, and we can always adapt immediately to that. Uh, I showed you in the last video that we had reinforced this. Uh, and all I'm going to do really quickly here is just chop down the screen now. Uh, the, the purpose of this final bell is hopefully by the time it gets into this, most of the material has become ash or is reducing down finally to an ash point. And that gas we've produced, which is actually being produced from here upwards, uh, this paralysis will be taking place here, producing gas that will be forced due to pressure inside a sealed tank will be forced up this. I'm going to try to turn so the wind's not affecting the camera here. Uh, will be forced up through the system. It'll be reduced through a heavy concentration of finer grade charcoal and then back through ash and out the screen and into our system where I'll show you from there. That'll help refine this gas we're producing, clean it up, and hopefully produce a lot less tars in our design. So give me a moment, chop that screen up. I'm going to build a couple of the elbows here, attach the pipes, and I'm going to show you what it looks like from there before we set this down inside of our barrel. All right, well, I just wanted you to meet one of my co-inventors here. He's helping me make the uh, gasifier. And just thought I'd give him a peanut here. He enjoys those, obviously. Come here, little man. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go back to how far we've gotten with the gasifier real quick. Throw it through. All right, we're going to have some wind in the background here, but I'm going to really quickly take you through what we've done. Uh, you see these two longer pieces here that are welded on. You can see right here, you can see a flange, you can see the rods are welded. Uh, what those do is stop that screen from ever opening any further than this. You see we've got the screen fully sized to the right size. 
I just built a couple hooked hinges over here on the back, welded them on as you can see. Just holds the screen in place. Uh, what these do is make sure that if we ever do have to use the shakers to make sure if there's anything that builds up on the screen, that it never can open up too far or fall out of place and that way you try to close it and it's always going to close right. Because basically most of the time it's going to be pulled nice and closed like this with just a little bit of play so that little bit of bumps going down the road can agitate it just slightly and keep it clean. You don't want it perfectly rigid. You also want to be able to, just in case something's gotten in there, say a rock or something's gotten in there that won't burn or anything like that, you can actually dump that into the bottom and get rid of it. Alright, so now we're going to go down and show you. I left one hole open here to show you what it was. You can see it right there. Now the other three of these pipes are now hooked up. So I'm going to back up and show you how far those go down. There's a little bit of wind here. I'm going to try to make this quick. Block some of it off. You can see that other pipe here going down. Those are four air inlets that you can see here. Well, three put on, one to still go. Uh, we've got our top grate ready to go. Once this is mounted inside the barrel, we'll have the little cable that goes down to this. And that way we can actuate this from outside of the uh, entire system without ever going in there. I'll show you that when we get there. Uh, I just thought real quickly here, I'd show you what it looks like as it starts to come together this far. And I just want you to remember, you can build these things with very minimal tools. I build most everything you see here with cordless tools mounted off a 12 volt battery sometimes, especially if I'm off site like this and want to use the truck. Uh, so you can go ahead and use any of that. I'm running the generator from a gasifier to weld all this together. So basically using wood, alternative energy to make a system to create more alternative energy. Alright, now that we've gone through and shown you basically the finished reactor, uh, just the cable, like I said, to go to this later on. I'm going to remove that screen. I'm going to go ahead and pull off all the metal here, the pipes and everything, now that I know where they go. And I'm going to start mounting this entire reactor now. Let me back up to show you. That system now is going to mount inside of that barrel. So I'm going to cut a hole in the lid of the barrel, which I'm going to do while it's all clamped down and weld while it's clamped down. Uh, start out with tack welds so you don't warp that steel. That's going to be the main key here, is not warping the metal on the lid of that barrel. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start cutting barrel here and apply that reactor inside of the barrel. Uh, it's not going to sit all that far down into the barrel. As you can see here, it's probably only going to come up to about right here somewhere. And that's going to be the lid of the barrel and the rest from here all the way up will be actually inside the barrel. Everything else will be either outside or inside a secondary barrel. And we'll go ahead and try to find another barrel here to, to cover that for more insulated value here. Uh, so give me just a moment to start cutting that barrel and we'll do another shot once I've figured that out.